Good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a great Saturday so far. And got a good weekend planned. It includes spending time uh, with a church family somewhere. Uh, if you don't have a church family, a faith family, uh, I'd love to have you worship with us at Poplar Grove. Uh, but again, just uh, go ahead now and make plans. Going to church on Sunday is a Saturday decision. After you've made that decision, grab your Bible and turn with me back to the 102nd Psalm. Psalm 102. We'll be picking up in the 12th verse today. Again, this psalm is one, and it's important to remember the background uh, for this psalm. is uh, one that was written uh, in uh, a time of, uh, of um, captivity. Uh, we uh, generally uh, believe that uh, that Daniel was the author uh, in the time of the Babylonian captivity, and he spent uh, 11 verses uh, just crying out to God, explaining to God uh, why um, he was miserable, uh, the problems that he was facing. Uh, but then in verse 12, we have uh, a major shift, and you see this little word. Uh, if you know anything about the English language, you know this is an important uh, little word, little phrase, but thou. Uh, and so after listing all the issues and all the problems, the enemies and the, uh, the things that were going wrong, but thou, O Lord, shall endure forever in thy remembrance unto all the generations. And so uh, he shifts in this, uh, in this section after listing, uh, again, if we just had 11 verses of this psalm, uh, we would think that the psalmist was a miserable, uh, faithless um, person. Uh, and But yet, uh, these verses tell us uh, that he is putting his confidence in God in spite of uh, everything that he has, uh, he has just listed in those first uh, 11 verses. In spite of uh, all the overwhelming, uh, horrendous uh, trouble he was going through, he still had confidence, he still had faith, he still had hope that God was going to deliver, uh, that uh, he was going to rescue his people uh, and return them uh, back to Jerusalem. Uh, and so he states here in verse 12, uh, Lord, you will endure uh, forever. Uh, he, he makes a very simple uh, observation, a very uh, simple statement of faith uh, that he believes that, uh, that God uh, would endure forever, uh, that uh, no matter what happened to him, no matter what the circumstances um, were, how, how uh, horrendous uh, his personal situation was, uh, he believed that uh, God uh, was on the throne, would continue uh, to be on the throne, uh, and that thy remembrance, he says, that, that the people, uh, he says, I'm, I'm falling back. I'm remembering uh, all the things that you have uh, already done. Uh, and for Israel at this stage, it would have been uh, a lengthy list. Uh, just in the, uh, the, the exodus from Egypt alone, uh, the dividing of the Red Sea, the plagues, the feeding them, uh, the water from the rock, uh, overcoming uh, numerous enemies. And so uh, just in, in their remembrance, the psalmist says, I remember, I have not forgotten uh, that you are on the throne and that you uh, are a powerful uh, delivering God. And so even in this situation, uh, I'm going to put my confidence, my hope uh, in you. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to uh, favor her. Yea, the set time is come. Uh, notice what he says there in verse 13, you shall arise. Not I hope you will arise, uh, not I think you will arise, but God, I have confidence that you're going to step up 
and you're going to have uh, mercy. You are going to deliver uh, your people. Uh, they had uh, been in uh, Babylonian captivity uh, for some 70 years now. Uh, and those 70 years are over. Uh, and it is now time that God will intervene uh, and restore uh, his people and return them uh, to their homeland. Uh, he uh, continues, if you uh, read in those verses, For thy servants take pleasure in uh, her stones, and favor the dust thereof. Uh, so the heathen shall bear the name of the Lord and all the things of the earth uh, thy glory. Uh, when the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. And so he is believing uh, that uh, his confidence, he knows that uh, God, he says that they take pleasure in her stones. In other words, he knows that God's people love Jerusalem, that God loves Jerusalem, uh, that they love their city. Uh, uh, and that God is going uh, to deliver and restore them and overcome uh, this this power, this country, this nation uh, that has uh, overtaken them. Uh, and verse 17, he says, um, he will not regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. Uh, he will regard it. He's going to hear the prayer uh, of his people. And so he uh, exercises is this again this great confidence um, in the deliverance and the power uh, of God. He continues uh, in this section in verse 18. This shall be written for the generation to come, and the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. For he hath looked down from the height of his sanctuary. From heaven did the Lord behold the earth uh, to hear the groaning of the prisoner, to loose those that are appointed to death, to declare the name of the Lord in Zion uh, and his praise in Jerusalem when the people are gathered together and the kingdoms uh, to serve the Lord. Uh, and so uh, he is counting uh, on God's promises uh, to the people of Israel and depending on them and, and, and counting on him uh, to hear their prayer uh, and to deliver them uh, from this uh, this captivity, this bondage uh, that has went on now again for 70 years. Um, and so we have a uh, a good lesson for us there. Uh, again, when we are in the middle, uh, when we are uh, consumed with uh, with uh, with trials and tribulations and uh, problems and difficulties, like the psalmist, we have to depend uh, on the the promises of God. When He says, "I'll never leave you nor forsake you," and He says, "I'll give you a peace that passes all understanding, life." In life abundantly in the valley of the shadow of death uh, I go with you uh, and so uh, we have those promises of God that we uh, that we hang on to uh, the only thing we have that we can uh, be secure in uh, in the midst uh, of uh, of our troubles and our trials, uh, the only thing we can depend on that is unshakable, uh, knowing uh, that Romans tells us that he is working out all things for good to those that love him. Again, he doesn't say all things are good, but he says he's working them together for good. Uh, but he also adds another stipulation to those that love him. So for his people. Uh, he is bringing everything together uh, for good. Uh, I've, I've heard that verse explained in the way of uh, someone who uh, doing uh, cross stitch or needlepoint or uh, wh whatever you call that, uh, where you know sometimes if you've ever seen somebody doing that and you look at the backside uh, of what they're doing, it's a mess. I mean, all these strings and knots and everything else. But when you flip it over, uh, then you see uh, the creation. Uh, and sometimes our life is that way. We we only uh, for a time see the backside and see the the tangled mess. But God is is ultimately uh, working out 
uh, an end for us, a glorious uh, end. We also know that the Bible tells us uh, that His grace is sufficient. Uh, and so we have all these biblical uh, promises that we uh, rely on, uh, that we can depend on uh, when we are going through uh, our difficult uh, hours. And so this morning, uh, as we wrap up here today, uh, let me just encourage you, uh, hope it uplifts you and gives you a little more uh, strength for the battle to know that uh, whatever challenges come, uh, whatever difficulties, whatever battles uh, you face physically, financially, uh, in your family, uh, whatever they are, uh, you know uh, that uh, we have the promises uh, of our God to go with us and to see us through. Uh, and so learn to depend on them. That, uh, another thing that teaches us is the importance uh, of learning learning and studying uh, the Word of God so we know those promises uh, so that we have them to uh, to cling to. Uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, one of the things I like to do if I'm going to go out on a boat, uh, even though I'm a pretty good swimmer, uh, I want to know where the life jackets are kept. Uh, I want to know where they are just in case. Um, and the same thing is true with our spiritual walk. We need to know where the life jackets are. We need to study the Word of God so that we know his promises, we know his word, so that when we face those battles, we know where to run. All right, hope that uh, helps you. Uh, you may not need it today, but maybe tomorrow, uh, and uh, hope that helps you along the way. Have a great day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow morning.